All right, what's up, everybody? This is Alex from X Trades, and welcome back to another weekly trade ideas list. I hope everybody had a wonderful trading week last week, had a good weekend, got to rest your brains, all that good stuff. We had a pretty insane week in the stock market last week. We did have the CPI report, so we did have a very important inflation gauge, as well as the producer side, we had PPI as well. So it was a pretty insane week. Definitely had a nice run in the market. CPI came in line basically with expectations. And honestly, I think the market needed that because every single print this year was over forecast. I even finally got to close out my TLT 90 calls. I was definitely bullish on bonds and expecting yields to fall. Been in this for a couple of weeks, so it was nice to finally see this played out. We made almost 50%. Made about 46.5 according to the app here. Also had some Amazon puts last week and did a little QQQ call scalp. So I got some trades in. I had a, pretty much a whole week off the week before this because I had to fly to Chicago. So kind of just warmed up into this week and it went pretty good. So hopefully this week will be the same and we'll go ahead and find some good setups. So if you tuned in last week, we did have two setups. We usually have three, but this week we do have three. PLTR did really good last week, so that was nice. The PLTR calls had a pretty nice run up from Monday into Tuesday. And then we also had Facebook puts on watch as well. But honestly, that one fell so hard at market open on Monday. It was very hard to get in unless you got in right at open. And then I kind of had a bullish week throughout the rest of the week after Monday and Tuesday. But Monday and Tuesday, it was a little bit bearish for Meta. So that did play out just a little bit. But like I said, you had to be quick. PLTR was much more gave you more time to enter at the open. It didn't really run as hard. And then Tuesday, you had a really big push up. So you were able to get follow through on that momentum. So PLTR was definitely the winner of last week, I would say, out of our list. And then I showed you the Amazon puts that we took as well. I wish I added that one to the list in video last week because I actually posted the Amazon chart in the chat that Sunday night. I just didn't have it on our list. I probably should have, but I was looking at more longer term stuff on it because it was at that 2021 resistance. But anyways, we'll go ahead and get into the economic calendar here real quick quick so really the only thing that's important this week is going to be on wednesday and thursday you can see we have existing home sales at 10 a.m on wednesday also at 2 p.m we're gonna have the minutes of the feds may meeting from the last fomc so that will be interesting sometimes we'll see something different in black and white that we didn't hear at the press conference and that can move the market but lots of times these fomc minutes they're kind of muted for trading but we'll see thursday i'm a little bit more excited for because we do have services pmi and also manufacturing pmi so the pmis always have a chance to move us pretty well so it's pretty good for day trading and stuff like that because there's a big knee-jerk reaction either up or down not exactly sure where it will go but there is a knee-jerk reaction to trade usually on these PMI releases, also ISM manufacturing data and uh, ISM services as well. And then also we have new home sales at 10 a.m. So that will be interesting as well. And then we have Bostic speaking at 3 p.m. So lots of Fed speakers this week. You can see Monday, three of them. Tuesday, we have a couple more. And then one on Thursday and also one on Friday. So yeah, Friday is really nothing crazy going on either. You can see it's just durable goods orders, but consumer sentiment at 10, this always has a pretty good knee-jerk reaction to trade at 10. So definitely pay attention to the consumer sentiment. So that's really it. Just the services PMI, manufacturing PMI. You have the minutes on Wednesday and also consumer sentiment. I would say those are the most important. All right, not to seasonality. So last week's was actually very muted. We really didn't have anything. As you can see for this period, I think there was maybe a slight up thrust but it was nothing crazy same with this week i mean you can see that the winning trades are only at 45 percent and this is back testing short trades since there's a little pullback that's why it's back testing the short trades so you only have 45 percent winners the last 20 years to the downside you have summarized profit at four percent so the strategy did come out positive if you went short this period the last 20 years but as you can see i mean it's really not a big pullback by any means and then the big move is really towards the end of May. You can see there's a really big up thrust here going into June. So I'm a little bit more interested in next week's seasonality since you can see this big up thrust historically. But seasonality is not really going to predict every single move, obviously. It didn't predict last week's move, I would say, because we had a pretty big up thrust. And seasonality is really not going to account for CPI data or Fed speakers, stuff like that. So we just look at this to kind of see at where we're at on the historical patterns, see what we're potentially going into the next week, all that good stuff. You can kind of get an idea of what to expect. And I feel like seasonality is really good on a quarter over quarter basis especially on a month over month basis as well. But I do like to cover this week by week because sometimes, you know, it does kind of give us a good read into what we could be walking into historically for seasonal patterns. We could check out the 10 year data set real quick, see if it's showing anything different. We actually looked at the 10 year data set last week and it was actually a little bit more bullish. I think winning trades was at 70% and there was a decent summarized profit as well. 
it was definitely better than the 20 year. It looks like the 10 year data set we actually did follow pretty good. As you can see, there's a pretty good up thrust last week. So here's this week. It's kind of a little bit of an up thrust, not as big as last week's bounce, obviously. So maybe the 10 year data set's been a little bit more accurate. Obviously, more recent data is going to be in line with more recent market conditions. So that could be why it was reading that little bounce we had last week a little bit better. Just due to recent market conditions, it's going to follow the 10 year data set maybe a little bit better. But I feel like the 20 year data set's good as well because you are getting more data accumulated into that and you are getting a better historical pattern with more data and more years in it. So I would say slight neutral bullish tilt if you're going off the 10 year here. Winning trades at 60%, gains you got six, losses you got four. So over the last 10 years, you did win 60% of the time if you went long here in this period from the 20th to the 24th. All right, and on to the individual tickers. We'll go over these pretty quick. Hopefully we won't stretch this video out too long. So the first one I'm looking at here is UAA. I actually had this in our list probably about a year ago. I think it was back in June or July of 2023. So we're looking at this 2022 low and we did end up going long. I think this area, it did dip down into that towards September and October, but then we had a really big rally and we closed the shares up 850 a share. I think that's where I closed my shares. So we're back at the same level that we were looking at about a year ago. So I'm definitely interested in that. You can see this one week bar did dip down into the lows and you have a really big kind of lower shadow wick here pushing up to the upside. So maximum for right now, if I'm looking for upside, I could maybe project up to here, up to this little downtrend line. It's probably about as high as I could reach it for right now. But if it does want to break out of that, obviously we can project higher. So that downtrend line could definitely act as resistance for right now. But I am looking at longs on this. So either shares or longer dated options. Obviously, it's a pretty cheap stock. It's only $6.78 a share. So you can buy more shares and you don't really have to worry about buying options. That's why I grabbed shares last time it came down to this area because it's so cheap. So UAA looking at calls, looking at shares as well, longer term stuff, really strong support. You got support 638, bounce, bounce, really short term bounce. Tried to flush the lows and they took it back over. So this one week close back over proved that these lows don't want to flush yet. And it could try to head back up higher over some coming weeks, over some coming months. All right, number two, we're going into GE. This thing has just been a crazy runner. I'm guessing it's really been a leader in the Dow Jones. I mean, this thing just goes up nonstop. But now we're starting to get some signs of it slowing. You can see it's actually breaking down this little wedge. If it test one, test two, test three, test four, rejection finally off the upper line. You have a test one, test two, no test three bounce on this lower line. It actually flushed through that. You also have a very short term head and shoulders pattern. So you got your first shoulder, you got the head, second shoulder, and then you got the neckline, which is very obvious at 158.69. If it can get under 158, that can really flush lower. So you have a head and shoulders plus this little uptrend line breaking or this little rising wedge, whatever you want to call it. If it can break under this 158 neckline, you have a really good chance to flush lower. And below that 158, you got a little pivot low here at this big green bar at 152.82. And also this little red bar right here at 146.78. So if 158 flushes, you got 152s and 146s. So I'm looking at puts on this. We can look at the moving averages real quick. We did close under the one day 21 EMA. So new one EMA right here, and this is your nine. It's just turned into a cloud. So it's a cloud 921 indicator. So we finally closed under the 21 and the nine. You did have a false breakdown here. You had a close under the 21, actually bounced back up. But now we're starting to create that second shoulder. So the important thing is that it actually breaks the neckline. If it breaks the neckline at 158, so you can enter puts. Probably something with June expiration minimum. It's going to give you 30 plus days. You could probably even go to July if you want to be a little bit on the safe side. Because obviously shorting in this market is very risky right now with volatility this low. You got VIX closing below 12. I mean, it's just crazy. But we are starting to see this form. Head and shoulders plus a rising wedge break. Looks pretty good for puts. You could even right click, hit add alert on this little neckline. We'll call it neckline breakdown. Hit create alert neckline breakdown that way once this starts flushing you will be notified so that's for ge looking at puts waiting for the neckline break probably june expiration minimum all right and last but not least for our individual plays this is actually a moving average play we don't really have any big supports or big resistance nearby the most nearby resistance is probably at this 30 level but we're not there yet but what we are doing here I could even get rid of the 921 real quick, just so you can see the 50 and 200. So here's your 200 EMA, 200 SMA actually. So here's your 200 SMA with the dots. 
here's your 50 SMA with the regular line. So whenever the 50 SMA or even a 50 EMA crosses over your 200 to the upside, it's usually called a golden cross and it can be a bullish signal. Obviously with LUV right here, it was very late. So if you went long, just cause you got a golden cross right here, you would have gotten shafted on this little gap down right here. Whenever LUV got a death cross, which is when the 50 is crossing down the 200, this is a very, very good short. So we are starting to get some hints that we do have a death cross here. Obviously, we might have a lower high. We'll have to see how Monday opens. Might need to start breaking down some more serious levels, probably like this little gap high right here, this previous gap high at 2750s. If it gets under 2750s, you have a big buy and balance candle here that will probably fill up to the downside. And you start heading to this pivot low right here at 2550. One thing that's a little bit sketchy about trying to short LUV right now is that on the one week it's actually pretty oversold and it's been in a downtrend for a very long time so this would probably be a short-term play but you do have a longer term downtrend signal with the death cross you have the 50 crossing down the 200. you also have price rejecting the 50 sma right here so this could be a lower high you even had a big rejection of the 200 sma right here into earnings and that gap down pretty heavy obviously when you have a big gap like this people are going to try to fill it back up and now it's trying to bounce but we do have three days of stalling out i really would wait for it to get under that 2750 if you want to be very sure if you wait for it to get under 2750 that gets under this this and also this little short term support you can see it actually try to bounce right here just a little bit so this could be setting up for a bigger flush to the downside obviously you just wait for the 2750 signal if you want to be absolutely sure wait for a close under that or wait for it to start getting closer to that level wait to see how it reacts because if you pull into this it can act as support because it's previous resistance it could be a back test level and try to go higher but you do have the 50 and the 200 sma that have been acting as resistance 200 sma rejection here short term 50 sma rejection right here on friday so that's for luv looking at puts be cautious shorting in this market it's very risky but there is a couple setups ge i showed you head and shoulders you have a rising wedge breakdown luv potential death cross to downside potential lower high that could set up for a flush under 2750 so wait for that 2750 breakdown and you could be golden all right and on to the indexes so for spy last week we had that new 52075 that we added from this right here we also have 518.57 as a level below it. We didn't end up pulling into 518.57, which I said could be a good dip buy level, but we did pull into that 520.75 and hold that very well. And I'll show you in the 15 minute time frame. So if you did have that 520.75 level drawn out, it was actually a pretty good scalp level. You can see Monday here, tried to flush under it, but then once we got over Tuesday, I tried to pull into it right here, held it up, pull back into it again right here, and we had a pretty big rally up into the 524s. But 524, 61 was the only level I could project to because that was the all-time high. So whenever we broke that 524.61, you had to draw a new Fibonacci extension because you have no previous resistance. You have nothing to go off of except for that 1.272. You had to draw from this high down to this low to get this extension right here. And that was at the 532s. I added this pretty much later on um, Wednesday, I think, whenever we had to close over and confirm the breakout because you have nothing else to go off of so this is the max level i could project to and we did not make it up to it this week but that's probably the max i could still project up to now and that would essentially be the first target of a fibonacci breakout like this from the high to the low this is the 1.272 extension of that move so it's definitely very hard to be long the spy last week i would say especially if you're swinging into cpi just because we were so close to the all-time high resistance, you just had no idea it was going to break out like that. I really like the bonds and the TLT better, which is why I stayed in TLT into CPI and I sold the TLT calls on the gap up that morning. But for the SPY, I mean, it's just so close to resistance, it's very hard. TLT was a little bit lower and more value, more discounted. So for this week, for dip buying, I really would like to see it get back down to 524 eventually kind of back test this previous all-time high that's a really good level to buy the dip at and do scalps off of but for right now we are kind of a little bit overextended over that so i'm not exactly sure if we will pull back five points to get to this level so you may have to go down to a shorter term time frame for scalping that's really all you can do i definitely wouldn't want to go long up here still i wouldn't want to go long right here below resistance and i really wouldn't want to go long here right now above it either it's just so high up I mean, obviously, if you like bought leaps or something and you're not looking at the price every day, doesn't really matter. I mean, the spy usually gives you an 8 to 10% 
per year anyways. But for short-term trading, this is a very hard level because you have to start worrying about pullbacks, even if it's just short-term, because if it's short-term, the slightest pullback is going to screw up your contracts. So you have to be very selective when trading options about where you go long and where you go short. You want the least amount of drawdown on your contracts you can get unless you have a lot of time on your options. And usually we're trading relatively short-term options. Anything below like six months is very short-term. I mean, theta kicks in very hard at three months. It gets even worse when it's one month to expiration. So you got to be very careful and be very selective where you're entering. That's why last week I didn't feel like this is a good area to go long. It's a good area to scalp, do whatever. That's why, you know, the 52075 was a pretty good scalp level last week. Even if you traded this breakout, the 524 breakout does a pretty good call scalp to do that morning on CPI. I mean, it ran the whole day. I mean, it didn't gap up too heavy, gave you a little morning dip and then ran the rest of the day. Even the moving averages holding over back tested the 9 EMA right here ran further so I mean it's pretty smooth it can just be really hard you know to go long horizontal breakouts like this especially if it's already pretty overextended you can see right here this little breakout bar it pulled back into the 518s right here and it bounced right there so that made a pretty good trade by buying this little pullback right here I could even zoom in a little bit so here's the breakout Here's the back test at 518s and here's a short term bounce. So that makes it a little bit easier to just buy the pullbacks instead of buying as soon as it breaks out. So I don't really have too much of an outlook for SPY this week. I mean, maximum, I have it up to the 532.97 if it wants to continue, which is the 1.272 extension. So this is the extension of this high to this low. And that's really all I can project. I really would like to get down into the 524s eventually, look for a dip by there. It's kind of my determined area to go long or look at scalps. And that's really about it. Those are the only levels you can kind of go off of right now. There's really nothing else. If you did go down into the 15 minute or the one hour, something like that, you know, you can mark this recent high. This is a short term scalp level. You have this low right here. That's a short term scalp level. So you can mark the 527s and the 53150s. You could do that as well if you need short term scalp levels. And then you can watch this little breakout right here. See if this turns into something Monday and it can get two points to the upside up to 531 because we're already at 529. So you only have about $2 before you tap this high. So it really need to get over that 531.50s to get to 532.90s, which is that uh, 1.272 extension we're looking at on the one day. So that's really all you can do right now. It's uh, pretty tight. I mean, since Thursday, it's been relatively tight. No big pullback. Had a pretty good bounce. QQQ had a really good back test and bounce on Friday and we'll go over that next. But SPY here, I mean, you kind of have to zoom down because you really don't have any nearby levels other than the 527.32, that 531.50s, which is the most recent high. And then your big one day level that you want to pull into eventually to buy is that 524.60s. All right, and on to QQQ. So last week, we were kind of looking at this downtrend line. I mentioned that this could be a good short setup, assuming we started closing inside the downtrend line or back under 442. It did not do that. Here's Monday's bar. It held the 442s first thing. It held the breakout and we went higher. And the max upside you could project last week was really up to 449s, which is the previous all-time high. So all in all, in hindsight, this actually turned out to be a pretty good breakout play. It held really good on Monday. So you didn't have confirmation of going lower because it didn't close back within the downtrend. You had to holding up very well. Set up for Tuesday. We had a nice little push-up bar here. And then CPI was a blow off top. We'd even go down to the 15 minutes, see how the levels were holding last week. So that 442 that we have marked, here's Monday. So pulled in the 442 here, short term bounce. You had a nice wick and hold right here at 442. Pretty slow on Monday. We really didn't get a big push until Tuesday. But I think the fact that we kept closing over 442 and holding it, that set us up for that push up into Tuesday. And then obviously your inline expectations for inflation set up for that big move and blow off top on Wednesday. So that 449.34 breakout, pretty straightforward. That could have been a good play. I didn't have to do anything on Wednesday, thank God, because I was already in TLT calls and then I had Amazon puts, which Amazon sold off after the report. I have no idea why. So we made 25% on the Amazon puts and I didn't have to day trade CPI at all, luckily, because I don't like day trading on CPI day all the time because it can get a little bit wacky. So the fact that I was already in something and it profited, you know, first thing at the open was great, but it would have been really nice to catch this big move for sure. I mean, this breakout was straightforward. Same with SPY. The horizontal breakouts don't always go this smooth. Like it'll put in a new high and then it'll pull back and fart around and mess around, try to shake you out before trying to go higher. This was just a straight up blow off top. So right now, actually, this is kind of what I was talking about for SPY. So here's the previous all time high. I mentioned I wanted to see SPY kind of do this where it pulls into the previous back test. You see a 
big wick like this and you can push up higher but it would need to pull back to 525 or 524 to do that so here's the previous all-time high and then here is friday which had a pretty big downside bar right here pulled into the back test level and bounced right there so it didn't touch it exactly but it's close. 449.50s as a low and 449.30s as the back test level. So sometimes you kind of just have to go out of the general area because it's not always just going to tap directly. And there's also a similar breakout going into Monday. So here's QQQ. If we open outside this, I really could see a potential pop here for Monday going up to, you know, the new all time high, which is at 554.60s. So that's probably the max upside I could see for right now. I don't really have any other levels to go off of. We did add a new Fibonacci level. So here's the 1.272 extension at 459 that comes from this high down to this low. And this is the 1.272 extension of this measurement. And you kind of just have to go off the extension targets when you don't have anything else to go off of because there's no levels or all time highs. So that's really it. The 454.60s to the 459s, which is the extension target. This hasn't been reached yet. This short-term resistance has been established. This one up here has not. And they also have 449.30s. So as long as this is holding, we are still bullish. You could get bearish under the 449s. If we start breaking the 449s, this is a pretty big buy imbalance that can fill back down to 442. So under 449, straight shot down to 442. You could even go off the moving averages if you wanted to. So if it gets under 449s, you know, you just trade puts down to the nine because lots of times it'll pull back into the moving averages. It'll hold as a higher low and then it'll bounce higher. So sometimes if you're shorting while it's above the moving averages, you want to sell once it reaches it. I can show you so many examples of why that's a smart thing to do. I mean, right here, pulled into the 921 combo, bounce. Uh, rejected right here pulls into the 921 combo bounce same thing here tried to flush under but eventually got back over rejected here pulled into the 921 combo bounced again it just keeps holding it so that's why if you are shorting over the 921 combo as such you'd probably want to sell your puts once it got down to the moving averages it's just a smart thing to do at least take you know most of it off hold some runners if you have to because i mean it can get nasty you can get caught in a big bounce off a higher low and you'll wish you sold. So yeah, that's really it. I don't really have too much to give you this week. Just definitely mark that 449.30s, previous all-time high, also this short-term back test level. We can zoom down to the 15-minute, mark your new 454.60s, which is this high, and then also this breakout. So we are setting up for a short-term pop here, maybe Monday. That's really about all I could see for right now. And the max upside I could see is that, you know, 454s. If that 454 breaks, we do have an extension target up at the 459s, but that's pretty far away for right now. So QQQ is still looking pretty bullish as long as it's over 449s. If we start flushing under 449, definitely scrap this idea of this little breakout. Even if it starts closing back under this little downtrend breakout, it could be a little bit more risky. I would just sit on your hands, wait for it to get back outside or something. You could even watch the 449s. So if it does fall here for some reason, and this is a fake out. You could definitely watch the 449.30 still or the 449.50s. Watch this back test level on the one day because it can definitely bounce again for scalp. So you can look at call scalps. So that's really it. Bullish over 449s, bearish under that. So definitely watch this level. Make sure it holds. All right. And for our finale here, we'll go over the VIX. So I still have the same levels up that we had last week. I really haven't changed them. So I mentioned for a volatility signal last week, if you want to see the market go lower, you needed a close over the 1367. I did mention that this looked pretty good. To kind of curl up and head back to the 1367 level look what it did first thing monday so we pulled up into the 1367s it did get over it briefly probably just due to event risk so people were already pricing in cpi and ppi and all that nonsense first thing on monday because the indexes really didn't even pull back that much on monday honestly like the vix was up eight percent and the spy stayed flat, maybe a little bit tad red, but it really didn't do anything. So that's how you kind of know that this little pop right here was just event risk. It was people pricing in, you know, the potential big move for CPI, PPI, stuff like that. And it wasn't really because of fear, but it was interesting that as soon as it got down to the lows, it curled back up. It went back up to our 1367 we were looking for last week and it touched that. But notice one thing, it did not close over it. So you had this close here on Monday is probably about, let's look at this bar. So the close Monday was at 1359. So that's below the level. Close here Tuesday was at 1341 below the level. And then a really big flush on CPI day below 1367 back down to the lows. 
at 12.37. So look, it stayed within our range all week. Never closed over 13.67, never closed under 11.82. So it's the same levels again this week, guys. We have 11.82. I definitely be a little bit cautious of it starting to curl up here. You might need a better signal showing that, you know, it's gonna curl up. So my only signal to short spy is either a very aggressive VIX candle off the lows here, or it closed back over the 1367. So we start closing back over 1367, I'll definitely start looking at SPY or QQQ puts for indexes. The only reason why I took Amazon puts last week is because there was a head and shoulders pattern set up. I can even show it to you real quick, but otherwise volatility has been so low guys, it's very hard to short. And I think I just got a little bit lucky choosing the right thing to short, even after CPI came in, you know, pretty well compared to what a lot of people thought it would be. That one in line 3.4 versus 3.4, I mean, it just helped the markets a lot. But look at Amazon on Wednesday. So even after the CPI report, this thing still sold off aggressively and I sold down near the support right here. So I sold into this candle right here. I didn't get all the way down to the 182s. I actually missed out on an extra $40 a contract or something, but I did sell directly like right here. So we got very lucky because market screamed higher Wednesday. Amazon actually dumped right at the open. You can even see it try to bounce aggressively right here. So got very lucky. You just have to be selective. But right now, volatility is so low, guys. So it's very risky to short, especially for SPY and QQQ. So if you're trading the VIX, you are correlating that to the indexes or the SPY, the S&P 500, even the NASDAQ, since they kind of move somewhat similar. Individual stocks are going to do what individual stocks do, as you saw by Amazon. Even though VIX was going lower, Amazon still sold off aggressively. So just keep that in mind. The VIX is for SPY and QQQ, and individual stocks are going to do what they do. So if we want to see the market go lower, or you want a volatility signal, it's the same thing as last week. You want to see that close over 1367s again. Like I said, it can get back up there very quick. It only takes one day, two days. As you see right here, I mean, volatility picks up just out of the blue whenever it wants to. Whenever fear spikes, it comes in aggressively. So if you want to wait for VIX to get over and close over 1367, that'd be a great short signal. If you want to start looking at puts down here at the lows with VIX this low, I would only go 30 to 60 days out minimum. Go even further if you have to. Volatility is so low right now, it's going to need time to fart around. The indexes can fart around, consolidate when volatility is this low longer than you would imagine. So the market can stay irrational longer than you can stay solvent. You probably heard that saying before. So with VIX this low, if you're going to buy puts, like you think VIX is going to pop off the lows here and the market will go down 30 to 60 days minimum. I would even go 60 days, 90 days. Something you can give it time because if VIX flushes the lows here, it's going to keep melting and you really don't have any one day bullish bar really anything showing that it's reacting off the lows yet monday you had a hint that it could go higher but you really couldn't expect anything this was just from event risk this was people pricing in higher iv higher implied volatility for the event so until you can kind of get a hint of some real fear or some type of real volatility signal I really wouldn't try to go short the market here, at least on SPY or QQQ. Like I said, if you want to wait for SPY to get under the 525s, which is the previous all-time high, if you want to wait for it to get under that, you could do that. But for right now, for SPY, I really like if it dips into 524s to add on those dips, at least until June. And I showed you on the seasonality why. I mean, June is pretty ugly for seasonality. I'll show you again real quick. It was kind of the most recent 10-year data set for the pullback. Here's the 20-year. We'll look at that again real quick. It's definitely ugly for June. But for right now, we are still in May. Uh, the VIX is very low. Volatility is low. And we don't have any volatility signal. So yeah, that's really it, guys. Like I said, we are at the lows. So maybe start looking for some type of reaction to the lows here. Look for VIX to bounce. But even if it does bounce a little bit, it's really still... It might not be enough to kind of bring the market down aggressively. You might see a little... 0.3%, 0.5% pullback, something like that. But you would really need a big VIX bar here to kind of bring the market down 1% or more. And you want to see fear coming in more aggressively because the VIX is so low, guys. I mean, it's at 12. That's really all I got for you guys. Volatility signal over 1367. Look for it to close over that eventually. If it starts closing over that eventually, that's your signal to start looking at SPY, QQQ puts, stuff like that for swings. If you did not want to wait for that signal and you feel confident at this low, like I said, at the 1182s, you don't have a bar here yet, but if you think it could react here, start bouncing 30 to 60 days, maybe even 90 days for puts. It's very risky and it needs time to fart around, like I said. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe to our extra YouTube channel. I'm going to get this chopped up, sent out, all that good stuff. So I love you.
and I'm out. There's a reason why Xtrades is currently the fastest growing application on the market for sharing financial ideas. With over $2.5 million paid in the last two years to contributors, users are flocking to see what trades the top traders on the leaderboard are sharing in real time. If you're looking to grow your reputation as a trader on the internet or discuss your trading ideas with other reputable investors, click the link below and get connected with the trading mentor today, completely free of charge.